All right, so for the first part of this problem, we went through and found the equation of motion for the spring mass, and now we have to answer these last three questions to complete the problem. And the first thing the problem wants is what's called the damping factor. And so the damping factor has a formula, we'll just call it damp fact to abbreviate it. It is equal to A times E to the alpha T. So for this problem, we need to find the value of A, which again is the square root of the sum of the squares of the C1 and C2. And then we need, our alpha was already given to us earlier as negative four. That's just the real number and the complex root that we found. All right, so according to our formula, A is equal to the square root of C1 squared plus C2 squared. So this is gonna be equal to the square root of negative two squared plus a negative seven halves squared. So that's gonna be equal to the square root of four plus 49 fourths. And so that will be the sum of 16 and 49 over 4. So that's going to be the square root of 65 over 4, or just the square root of 65 over 2. So going back to our formula, that's going to be the square root of 65 over 2 times e to the negative 4t. And then we're gonna go through and find the quasi period. And that's just equal to P. And that's gonna be two pi over the value of beta, which is just the imaginary part of our complex number. So that's just two pi over two or just pi. And then the last part of this is the quasi frequency. And that's just the reciprocal. So that's gonna be just one over pi. So now what we'll do next is graph all of these in Desmos and take a look at how the motion of our spring changes over time.